welcome to another episode in our flight iron series in this episode we're going to be taking a look at my easy bug as always getting straight in with the tie-in we're starting out with a fish arm compound curved and size 12 in the vise with a 3 mil bead i'll often tie this with a size 14 and 2.5 mil bead as well um, they make a great point fly and great dropper fly in the smaller size it's usually the best as a dropper fly in the smaller size it's also a good duo fly or single nymph if you're sighting fish um, but in this size it makes a fantastic sort of deep fishing uh, point fly on a team of two or three nymphs as you'll see I'm running down a bed of yellow ultimate tie and silk just trim that off there and we're going just around the bend uh, not too far but to definitely want to go around the bend on this curved shank hook um, next thing I'm going to tie in is some copper wire this is 0.18 millimeters um, you can really vary up the color of the wire the color of the bead and the color of the dubbing on this fly and I call it the easy bug because it's easy it's one of the easiest flies you'll ever learn to tie um, it's not the easiest because it fe it features some dubbing and dubbing's not the absolute beginner's tying material to be using. It takes a little bit of messing about just getting some dubbing on the thread. But this is very, very easy dubbing material. This is Fishon's Nymph Bug Caddis dubbing in squirrel grey. You might notice we use a lot of Fishon materials in these tying videos. Um, that's not by coincidence or by any kind of sponsorship. Um, I used to work in Fish On. I was a founder member of Fish On and I outsource all of these materials. They're absolutely perfect. They're exactly what I wanted in a tying material. Um, John Tyzak, who still runs Fish On together with Andy Cliff now, those guys don't compromise when it comes to tying materials and neither did I when I was part of it. So if I'm using something from Fish On, it's basically because I helped create it. Um, after that bit of spiel, um, I've managed to dub on some of this Nymph Bug Caddis dubbing. I've made myself a little uh, sort of dubbing rod with, as you can see on the wide shot here, um, I've left some loose. What I'm going to do is just dub on the very end of that to stop it falling off the thread, but I'm leaving plenty loose. And I'm going to start working up, building up a body. But as I get about a third of the way up, I'm starting to get into this loose stuff. And what I'm going to do is just tighten it up slightly but not all the way so you get a nice dubbing rope of spiky stuff and I'm going to use that to build up the body so it might need two turns in one place as you build up rather than touching turns because it's on a bit looser when it sits down it's sticking up off the hook a bit so you need a few more turns to build the body but as you'll see you start to get if I pick a bit out you start to get these loose fibers that make quite a spiky body as you get up near the thorax, it wants to be even more loose, but I'm just adding a bit more dubbing. I've kind of exaggerated things slightly as I've dubbed on just so I can pick a bit off and show you just how loose it is. But that is sort of pure chaos on a hook really right now. I'm gonna run the rib up. It doesn't serve a massive function, this rib, but it does stop that loose stuff from coming completely adrift when you're getting toothy fish biting into it so um, it's basically like old, old big open turns just helps hold that stuff down and I'll just tie that off with a few turns here and then I can worry that off rather than cut it and it'll break right behind the bead there so you don't get a tag end sticking up if you wanted to you could finish it there you can just stick a whip finish on but I've got one final step just to get a really really tantalizing effect i'm going to do the same trick with the dubbing where i'm dubbing on tighter to each end so it's tight let me get something to point with because my fingers are so big in shot something it's tight dubbed there and there's a tight bit dubbed just there and then there's this massive loose bit and i'm just going to spin bit at the end so that tightens up until we get this kind of dubbing rope of really loose spiky stuff and as I put that on you'll see it really sticks up behind the bead you, you want it really loose like that 
and then as those few bits where it's dubbed on tight pass through it kind of pulls it on and you get a very big spiky head if I just put a whip finish on this now just straight and behind the bead with four or five turns whip finish this UTS bites in really well so we don't need to worry about any varnish or anything like that if I get a dubbing teasing tool now and just give this a brush what you'll get is almost like a hackled effect and you can get hold and give it a firm tug and pull out the looser materials and you can always give it a haircut sort of loose loose materials at the back you can tease right out to get yourself a bit of a taper on things so sort of pick out a bit less in the middle and then leave all that long stuff at the top that is like I say chaos on a hook but when you get that wet and put it in front of a fish it screams all manner of things from sort of shrimp and scud type patterns to caddis patterns to any number of terrestrial things that could have been crawling on a tree two minutes before it plopped in in front of the trout so that is um, more of a sort of base for building off your own patterns on um, don't think of it in terms of being that particular color and that size of bead or hook you can do this generic pattern with black olive cream uh, even bright colors like orange or yellow uh, pink as well um, you can vary your rib color you can have the rib color the same as the bead or different to the bead you can have bright beads you can have drab beads like this it really is one of those flies where you just use it as a jumping off point. Whatever dubbing you've got in your box, stick it on and give one a try. Um, they're really quick to tie, so if you fish one of those sorts of places where there are a lot of snags on the bottom and you lose a lot of flies, it makes a great what they call ammo fly, where you know you might put two or three of these in a snag in just one pool. Uh, so quick to tie, very, very effective, and just infinitely variable, really. That is my easy book.